Hi guys, welcome to this series. So this is the first video in this Django series. In this series, we're going to be talking about Django. So I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to start from a beginner level to a level where you are comfortable building your own projects with Django. So Django is a Python web framework, which means that we can build web applications with Python using Django. So we're going to use Linode for some services in the web applications that we're going to build. So Linode offers a 60 day $100 credit and the link is in the description below. So without wasting any time, once you sign up for that, let's get straight into this video. So Django is a Python web framework. Now what this means is that using Django, you can build web applications with the Python programming language. So this means that for you to learn Django, you need to have a basic knowledge of Python. Now in this series, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know to start building your own web applications with Django. So the first thing I'm going to start with is installing Django. So let's go forward with that. So right here on my screen, as you can see, I am on the Django website and this just shows what Django is and a basic tutorial of it. But to install Django, we actually need to go into our terminal. So I'm on a Mac. That's why I have my terminal. If you're on a Windows platform, you have to open your command prompt and then you need to run pip3 install Django. Now you only run pip3 when you're on a Mac. If you're on a Windows platform, you need to just run pip. So once you click enter, it will install that for you. It says requirement already satisfied for me because I have Django installed on my computer. So once you have this installed, the next thing that you just want to do is to actually, you know, set up a new project. Now this is fairly easy. What you just need to do is to make sure that you are in the particular folder where you want to set up that project. So what I'm going to do is to go into document by saying CD document. Then once I'm in CD documents and I'm going to create a new folder, actually, I can do this by running the command MKDIR and let me just say Django underscore project. Now this is going to create a new folder named Django project, right? Then I'm going to go into that folder, Django underscore project. So now I'm in that folder. If I press LS, this is going to show me everything that is inside that folder. As you can see, it's empty because it's a new folder I created. So let me clear this command just to make everything look clean. So right here, I'm in the Django project folder, right? The thing I can do now is to create a new Django project. So what you need to do is to say Django hyphen admin start project. And then you input the name of the project. So in this example, let's just say demo project. So as you can see, it doesn't give us any response. When it doesn't give us any response, this means it has created our project successfully. What I can just do is to say ls. So once I say ls, as I said, this ls command, it shows me all the folder and files in that particular folder. So as you can see now, we have this new folder named demo project. This is the project that Django has created. Now let's go into that folder by saying cd demo project. If I say ls, I'm going to have some files. Now these files are basically like the default boilerplate that Django generates when you create a new project. So what we can just do now, since we have this, we can actually run our project and see that our project is running. But before we do that, I'm going to explain to you what is called the Django app. So there is a Django project and there is a Django app. So the project is like the main body of everything and the app is, let's say like a subset of that project. So for example, let's take facebook.com for example. We can say facebook.com is the whole project, but then we can have an app for messages. We can have an app that just that is just for authentication, which is the signing up and logging in of a user. And we can just have an app, let's say for notifications. So that is what app is. It's basically like a subset or like a sub program of the whole project. So most of the times when you're working with Django, you need to create at least one app because except you are, you have like more, a very large project, then you might want to create multiple apps. But for this particular project that we are creating, we're just going to use one app. So to create an app, what we need to do is to say Python free manage.py start app. Then we're going to input the name of the app. So let's just say demo app. So this is going to create that app. Now, if I say LS again, you can now see that I have a new folder named demo app. So as you can see, everything is working right now. And when you want to create this app, make sure that you are in the root directory of that Django project. What I mean by root directory is 
the directory where the money.py file is. Actually, let's open this up in VS Code. And when we open this in VS Code, I'm going to show you all the files and tell you what each of them do. So right here, I have my VS Code. What I can just do is to click on File. Then I'm going to say Open Folder. And I'm just going to locate that folder real quick. Django Project, Demo Project. And I'm going to open this up. So now that I've opened it up, you can see that I have everything needed. So this right here is the whole project. This is the project folder and this is the app folder. So in this project folder, we have some files and all of these files we're going to explain as we go on in this series. I'm going to show you what we use all of this for, why we use it. But for now, just know that this is the demo app, which is the app of this particular project. And then this is demo project, which is the project folder of this particular project. So as I said, I'm going to explain what root directory is. So the root directory of a particular project is the directory or the folder where this manage.py is located. So most of the times when you want to open, you know, your project, you need to open your project where this manage.py file is located because you might want to run some commands. And most of the command we run in Django uses this manage.py file. So now that we have all of this, we've set up all our Django project. I've explained to you what Django is. Let's move forward with setting up Linode. So as I said, we're going to use Linode for some stuffs in this series. And for us to do that, we need to first sign up to Linode. So what I'm just going to do is to go into our browser. And right here in Linode, there's going to be a description. There's going to be a link in the description below where you can get the link to sign up to Linode. And there is a 60 day $100 credit so that you can follow along with everything we're doing in this series. So once you sign up to Linode, you should see something like this, a dashboard like this. And once you have that, we can move forward with this series. So guys, now that we are done with setting everything up, what we're going to do in this whole series is talking about Django. So as I said in the intro, this series is about introducing you to Django, but we're actually going to go in depth into the basics of Django. So we're going to talk about things like static files, template files, setting up databases in Django. And we're also going to build like a simple project. And this project is going to be an English dictionary where a user can search for a word and get the meaning of that word. So once we've done that, we're also going to deploy that project that we built to the web using Linode. So what I mean by that is that the project we are building on our computer, we're going to push it to the web. So we're going to have like a link that we can share around for others to view our project. So I hope you're going to enjoy this series and thank you for watching this first video. And if you like this video, please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And also drop in the comments whatever video topic you want us to cover next. So thanks for watching once again and I'll see you in the next one.